The purpose of this video is to help walk you through the floor tiling process. Before you start your project, make sure you've prepared your subfloor appropriately for your tile installation. First, you need to find the center point of your room. To do this, measure the four walls of your room and find their midpoints. Next, snap two chalk lines or trace two lines from the midpoints of each parallel wall and they will intersect at the center point. Before you start laying your tile, you should pull tiles from different boxes and mix them up to help deal with different tonal patterns that the tiles may have. Next, you'll need to set out a half row of tiles in both directions from the center point. Make sure you place the spacers in between the tiles. Stop when there's not enough room for a full tile. If the leftover room is smaller than one third of a tile, then you'll want to adjust your chalk or trace line so that half tiles appear on both sides of the room. If you're tiling an area that comes in contact with another type of surface like carpet or hardwood, you'll need a threshold transition. Note, some transitions are installed before tiling begins and some are installed after. Make sure you know which kind of transition you have. Now you are ready to start cutting tiles. In order to use a manual snap cutter, you must first align the cutting wheel to either your desired length or width. Raise the pressing bar and cut away from yourself using moderate pressure. Lower the pressing T and apply pressure to snap the tile. Tile nippers are needed for specialty cuts and can be paired with a contour gauge to get the perfect shape. Wet saws are less likely to chip tiles and should always be used for cutting glass and natural stone tiles for this reason. When measuring how much to cut your tiles, make sure you keep in mind your quarter inch expansion gap and your spacer size. If you have any sharp edges or rough edges, remove them with a sanding stone. Before you start tiling, make sure to clean off your tiling surface. Mix your thin set. Thin set mixing directions may vary, so make sure you follow the directions on the packaging. After mixing, let your thin set sit for five to 10 minutes. This is known as slake time. Make sure the thin set is appropriate for your type of tile. Use the trowel to scoop out a generous amount of thin set from the bucket and apply it to one quadrant at the center of your room's center point. Marshalltown has a full line of notched trowels for installing tiles of all sizes. Spread the thin set with the notched side of the trowel and press it into the floor at a 45 degree angle. Make sure to apply pressure, but not so much that you remove the thin set in the notched channels. The notched channels will flatten out when the tile is placed and will help ensure the correct amount of thin set is applied beneath the tile. The type and style of tile you're installing will determine the depth and width of the teeth that your trowel should have. Make sure you comb the thin set in one direction. Circular and swirling patterns will not allow the tile proper adhesion. Before you go any farther, it's important that you have a test tile. Firmly press a tile into the thin set bed, then pull the tile up. The tile should be completely covered with thin set. You could spread a thin layer of thin set onto the back of a tile to help achieve full coverage. This process is known as back buttering. Note, if you have areas on your tile not covered with thin set, it means you didn't mix the thin set properly, didn't spread the thin set evenly, waited too long to set your first tile, the thin set started to dry out, or you didn't evenly and firmly press the tile into the thin set. If there's an issue, correct it, then replace the tile and proceed. Place two spacers along the side where you'll add a tile. Position your spacers so they face up and out. Do not lay them on their side where corners meet. Apply your next coat of thin set to either side of the tile, making sure you follow your chalk lines to ensure your tiles are being placed in a straight line and that you're not tiling yourself into a corner. Next, set your second tile by aligning the edges and corners with your previous tile. Repeat this process until you have three or four tiles placed. Remember to not let your thin set skim over or dry. If it starts to dry too soon, remove it and apply a new coat of thin set. If you're new to tiling, you might want to only apply enough thin set for one or two tiles at a time. Next, continue spreading thin set and placing tiles. Every so often, use a damp sponge to remove any thin set that ends up on top of the tiles and take a step back and check the tiles alignment. Note, if the thin set is still wet, you can still rectify alignment issues by simply jostling them into the correct orientation. If you need to take a break, make sure you scrape up any thin set overlapping onto an area you're about to tile. If left to dry, the thin set will affect how well the tile will adhere. Once you have finished laying tiles in your first quadrant, you'll be left with a space between the tiles and the wall. This space is for cut tiles. Finish placing the remaining full tiles in your other three quadrants. Finally, wait for the thin set to harden. Different thin sets have different curing times, so make sure you check with the manufacturer. The last step in tiling is grouting. Before grouting, remove your spacers. If you're mixing your own grout, 
you will need a drill, thin set paddle, and a bucket. Much like the thin set, once the grout is mixed, allow it to stand for 10 minutes before you start the application process. Just like the thin set, it's important not to mix too much grout until you're comfortable with the grout spreading process. Spread grout in sweeping arcs with a rubber grout float. Apply at a 45 degree angle to make sure the float doesn't get pressed into the joints. If the grout is applied at a parallel angle to the joints, you will end up with uneven grout surfaces. Make sure the grout is applied to the joints, filling them completely. Now that you have completed one section of grout, take a damp sponge float and clean off the excess grout by making light passes diagonally across the tiles. Make sure you wring out the sponge float thoroughly because excess water can affect the consistency of the grout. Remember, the drier the grout is on the surface, the harder it is to remove. To remove the surface grout, you will need to make many passes. One pass won't completely clean off the grout. Be patient. Remove the remaining haze with a cheesecloth or microfiber cloth. If you have trouble with this, try using a grout haze remover. Do not walk over the surface for 8 to 12 hours to keep the grout clear of dirt and debris. After the grout has cured, it's important to apply a grout sealer. Grout sealers provide protection from stains, mildew, mold, and also keep your grout looking pristine. Make sure to wipe away any excess before it cures. If you are using glazed tiles, be extra careful to only seal the grout. Finally, cover your quarter inch expansion gap along the walls. You can do this with bull nose tile, wood quarter round molding, or regular baseboards. To order any of the tools used in this video, or if you would like to learn more about them, check out our online store or visit your nearest Marshalltown retailer.